don't know if that, you know, I don't like the music. I, I wanted to sh- change it up, and I thought it sounded good at the time. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's Monday night. It's Epix and Chill, and we've got six on the panel tonight. We've got Sully doing something Russian, I reckon. No, it's TSR, isn't it? Yeah. It's Swedish. Oh, yeah. Swedish. Yeah. Swedish. Yeah. Looking pretty smart. you got Ms. Modler there. What are you building, Ms. Modler? Something Swedish. Ah, uh, the Sub 105. What well, did you buy that at Scale Model World? Uh, no, I bought this a while ago. Um, oh, I have like enough. three of them now. Oh, fair play. She's trying to get through them. Uh, Miss bodler has got a cracked rib, so she may uh, jump in and out when she can get enough air in her lung, I guess. <laughs> Alex, I saw Alex on much. Sunday. Yo, Vu. Hiya, mate. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Good to catch up again. A small, yeah, a bit of a smaller show this time, wasn't it? It wasn't so big. Um, uh, I, I filmed know. it. A couple of people said that, but um, I think it was just different, wasn't it? With the yeah. uh, fall down at the bottom and stuff, which was a bit sad because yeah. it was quite a long way away. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the bacon bats are crap again. <laughs> uh, we see if you're a veggie, you don't, you don't judge them by yeah. that. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I bought one of their jam donuts. I should take a picture of it. And I bit halfway through it and I still hadn't come to any jam. So I bit into it again. And there was like like a like a teaspoon of it just layered on the bottom. I was like, oh, oh that's, no, that's, that's a good worst. waste. Dude. So oh, yeah. good portion of jam. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got Luke in the chat from Black Wife for Model Works. Have you got a challenge coming up? Is there something you're doing on your on your is there like a group build or something on your one, um... one group builds just come to the end? Yeah, um, and that was a memorial build for a guy that we've known for years and suddenly passed away. Um, so what the idea of that group build is with all our group builds, it's the members that vote mm. for, for the winner, really. And we give like little prizes and stuff, but we got some really good prizes with that one. Some mm. retailers and stuff have sponsored some real good mm. prizes, but the idea is that it's the members that vote. But with that one, what we're going to do is whichever the winning build is. At the yeah. end of the process, we're going to have that professionally mounted, and then present that to to Sam's family as like a reminder of his modelling, like because none of them are modellers, none of them. Um, so, so that's so that finished uh, beginning of April. So it's in the voting process at the moment. Yeah. Oh, fair play. That's what we've got. Do. James also on. James, how are you, my friend? I'm all right. Functioning on about three hours sleep, but <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. be functioning on three hours sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Nigel in the morning. house. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Nigel in the house. Good evening, Nigel. Good evening. Did you get your bits for the Mustang this week? Yes, I've just made you the videos did. today. Oh, I've got, I've got, I'm just going to do a live stream and do everything I've got so far on that Mustang. I've done nothing <laughs> since putting the bumper and the, and the and the wheels together. That was it. I haven't done nothing else. It's, it's um, not a lot. It's nothing like as complex as that Lancaster is. It's um no. It's very very quick go together. I saw um was it which part was it for your Lancaster that you put up this week? What part did you put um, up this week? Eight, I think. Yeah. yeah eight. It's it's yeah. a tidy looking bit of kit, to be fair, Nigel. I think oh, you've got a bit. Of... It's much better than I expected. It's got more detail than the Hong Kong models kit has. Yeah, which yeah. is amazing, really. Yeah, mm. probably it's cheaper as well. Levers and everything. It's bloody brilliant. Has it got like, light and sound and stuff in that one? Yeah, light like and sound and everything. I mean, the rivet details a bit soft. Yeah, and it's going to have great big panel lines everywhere. But I mean. Oh, FX kittens. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like my dog's supper, that. <laughs> <laughs> <We could, laughs> but yeah, it does look a tidy build, that. And how many parts is it? 55? Was it somebody said 55 or 155 parts? 130 parts. 130 parts, is yeah, it? But the Mustang's 130 parts as well, so yeah. maybe I got that wrong. Yeah. I think they're having trouble. Sorry, I think I think some of these companies are having trouble because I got an email this week saying that my Mustang, or last week the Mustang was delayed, 
And this week I've got an email saying that the Ferrari collection that I'm getting is being delayed as well. Um, so I think that it's very much a case of, I think they're having trouble getting it over from China, to be honest. It's funny. It's funny you should say that because I did that video this week saying that Mustang is now available in America. Yeah. I mean, who'd have thunk it, eh? A, a, a six scale Mustang GT500 making mm. it available in America. I mean, what's the point? Yeah, that's right. You know, you, you'd have thought it would have been available there first, wouldn't you? But anyway, yeah. um, and somebody replied in there and they said, oh, obviously America's getting it. And that's probably why we're getting having so much trouble getting mm. ours. But I've had no trouble at all. Yeah. So, strange. Um. What was I say? I just seen Jared there. Jared was there with his model, uh, with his model club. Nice to see you again, mate, and seeing your um your 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 builds there on the on on the tables. And it's good to catch up with you again. I saw you last. I think it was at um, Bugle Call. I think I last saw you, um, where you won. You beat me against my Bearcat bastard. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, well he riveted the uh, the he, he riveted the one seventy second scale plane. I can't which one it was now, but. Yeah, it was so tidy. I was like, my bear cat looked crap. <laughs> Put it to the back of the table while Jared was at the front, like, you know, <laughs> it off like they had actually done it on a 172nd scale. And he'd done the rivets and everything. Amazing job. So I didn't have a I didn't have a topic tonight because to be fair with you, I was a little I'm I'm if you don't already know, um this week I've taken ownership of Outlaw Paints. So I was in London, on the outskirts of London, Wednesday night. I left at six in the evening, drove up, picked up 4,000 bottles of lacquer paint and drove it back that night. And this week I'll be in a meeting, accountant meeting. I've got a web developer now on board to um, promote outlaw paints in this country. But the biggest headache I've got is um, I need to find a shipper that's going to do a reasonable rate of getting the product across without using air, using using boats. So that's my next challenge. But this, I've just been so far up my ass about it, you know, just trying to sort things out. Uh, meetings, I'm a business partner, Andrew. You know, you know, we've made some decisions. Um, so I'm going to be all that website's going to do is sell outdoor paint. That's it. And I'm not going to have a website where I'm going to be selling other stuff. The web is going to be called outlawpaintuk.com dot whatever, you know. So the idea is that when you go on there, you will see the, the Australian Outlaw Paint site and you have a UK website to make it easier, I think. Um, yeah, I know we cut down on the cost of um, 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 advertising it in SEO and everything. I'm just relying on the fact that if somebody looks up outlaw paint, you know, it will come. And then we've got to then decide how we're going to go forward with if some shops want it, how we're going to get it to the shops because I don't, it, 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 it's fine field anyway. Being VAT registered, set up a limit company, it's just been, but. I believe in the product. I believe in it. And and everybody I've spoken to that's used it, you know, they want it. So hardly now, um, we're going to be, you know, get, trying to get another batch of primers over. I've challenged Jason to sort out the pink primer. I said, I'll buy 100 bottles of primer off you if you get, get the pink sorted. But he's working on that at this moment. Because I think pink primer is missing now. I, you can't get it from. You can't get Mister Surface of pink anymore, can you? I've not seen that for sale for a long time. I've got it, it in the shop. <laughs> you can't get it, yeah, can you? Yeah, I've got it in the shop. <clears throat> yeah, wow. I've got some. Because I went looking. For, well, can't get, the black. Was, can't get the black for loving the, the money. No. Right. I found one shop in the whole of the UK, was it last week or the week before, one shop that had 1,500 black in stock and they had eight bottles. That's all they got left, so I bought eight. Because <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, you have to get that for a while. It's a good job you saw it before me, Luke. Say again. Say it's a good job you saw it before me. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, it is like rocking all shit now. You just can't yeah. get off of it. And leveling well, to that. Let there's, a, there's only a single importer into the UK, um, mm -hmm. so that shop must have had that for a while. Though those eight bottles, 
Yeah, I had that, and they had three bottles of lead lint in it. Aqua gloss. Wow. That's like non obtainable anymore. Yeah. yeah. I've got. How many you got? He said four. I said I love them. I've mm. got that, which is the the. Oh, new... the ammo. So apparently that is aqua gloss. I've sp I've only sprayed it once. And it sprays the same, the finish is the same. I don't know whether it is actually aqua gloss, but they is say it? yeah, yeah. So aqua the aqua is, uh, gloss is white. Yeah, that's white, but it dries right. too. Um, but they say the A stand range, everything you read online says that the A stand range is Alclo. Yes, mm. it's made by the uh, same people. Yeah, so but... that I've sprayed, I've only used it once because I haven't had cause to use it for any, but it's exactly the same as aqua gloss i swear their metallic paints have got less pigment in them than they did when they were all clad i swear it yeah so i don't use i've never used all clad metallics i always use super metallic i but they, they, they sent me some we talked about this before they, they sent me some and i'll show you in here the pigments it's just it's a joke mm. um Where's that copper one? There's one here which is copper. I've just trouble is I've just shaken them because I turned the box over. If you <laughs> here, there's but this is um aluminium. Look look at how much pigment there is in there. Oh wow. Mm. It's, like, it? it's less than a millimeter on the bottom, look. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Is that right? It can't be. It's I thought thick. you were showing us an empty bottle there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the bottom, see? It doesn't it's even that. cover, where the, cover the, the bottle. The it doesn't bottle, even cover that, look. No. Wow. That's mad. That's not good, is it? Mm. It's ridiculous. And the other problem is, because the bottle's now got this big square neck on it. Yeah. When you pour it out into your airbrush, all the pigment stays down here. It doesn't come up and out. Yeah. Yeah. You just get clear when you put it into your airbrush. So, um, mm. yeah. right, we're going to go over to the chat because I want to um, just ask us anything tonight. So, you're quite welcome to ask us questions, advice, anything. We did it three weeks ago and it went down really, really well with you guys. So, we thought we'd do it again. And the first question is from Matt B. Question I've lost the turret on a Tamiya 135th Easy 8 M4A3E8. No idea what I've done with it. Any idea where I can get a replacement? Tried eBay, can't see one on 3D printing sites either. Um, to be fair, mate, buy another kit. Uh, I know it, I know, it, I, know it, I know it. Yeah, it's sometimes, mate, but that's a big turret. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's have you it, lost it? Big carol. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think, right. you know, the carpet monster's good, but he's not that good. He wasn't I haven't that good. good. You can buy resin turrets for Sherwin's. Yeah. Because yeah. most kits, the turrets are the wrong shape or whatever. You can buy resin ones. Just hunt around and you'll find a resin turret for a Sherwin. Yeah. I think I know who does one. Give me two seconds. I'll... It might be more expensive than a kit. I, I was going to say it'd be more expensive than buying the kit, yeah. probably. But you can get it. I think yeah. Black, Dog, yeah. Black Dog resins do a Sherman uh, turret. Mm. I've just looked on, um, on Yegi. Um, there are some m4 a3 a8 um sherman's uh you have to buy the stls about 10 pounds mm. print the turret but you know Fair enough. i don't think there's a cost-free way of achieving <laughs> no there isn't uh, an m4 a3 a8 turret 35 uh 35th scale yeah or just tell tammy that it never showed up in the box <laughs> <laughs> which is fine as long as all the parts are on one sprue <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what's your mopper? Oh. I bought an Airfix P51D. I want to paint the main body in silver, but I've been so underwhelmed with earlier attempts. What advice, recommendations can you offer? Um, to be honest with you, straight away, have you put down a black primer? Mm -hmm. Are you airbrushing or brushing? Yeah. Are you hand brushing? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I would I would recommend if uh, if you're not used to doing metallic coats and stuff, just get a rattle can. 
good just shout. Get some uh, some like yeah. go to Halfords or like get some Orchard mm. Tech aluminium or something. Spray it. Or tell me a PS. There's mine. That's the same yeah. kit. Um, and I used if you if you can use lacquer. Mm. Uh, I sprayed Tamiya LP11, but I sprayed it straight onto the plastic. No black primer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a method that I picked up from Spencer Pollard. Um, and he was talking about natural metal finishes. Mm. And he sprays LP11 as a base coat. And then he'll pick out certain panels, which is what I did on that, you know, and change the the metallic on it. But using the LP11 as your, as your base coat. And it works really, really well. But LP seventy is awesome as well. Yeah, mm. any of the LP metallics, I really like them. And the mm. gift that keeps on giving. They've got so much pigment in them. Yeah, and oh, they go plastic. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it turns out really well. Um, and I was surprised because I've always, always, if I'm doing metal, either black or a gloss black primer, always. But mm. doing it that way, it, it works really, really well. Mm. Fair play. Or if you can't spray lacquers, like Alex said, use a rattle can. Rattle can, rattle can. The, 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 you know, there's a Tamiya rattle can which is absolutely awesome. Tamiya mm. silver. It's AS. A rattle can is it? It removes if you're not confident with your airbrushing, like putting down a, a, a an even coat. A rattle can gets rid of all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've I you know, no, I, away. Just I look at my. I look at my, my, I've got a cupboard here just full of rattle cans. And there's been times, you know, on cars especially, I'm like, do I really want to spend 20 minutes airbrushing this at rattle can? You know, you know, go over it two passes and it's done. Um, yeah, rattle can. It, it, and, and to be fair, I know um, Hobbycraft had them in and they're about £12, 11 99 I think it were at the time for rattle cans. So for the price of it, 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 you know, it could be worth it. I, I, used, share... a, I used an Autotech um, aluminium rattle can for mm. my 124 scale Spitfire. Mm. It's just running out now. And that's been, what, yeah. almost 18 months I've used that yeah. on various projects. Mm. So, I mean, if you're really yeah. tight, like me, and, and you want to use the rattle can colour, because there are some rattle cans that you can't get that colour in you know, LP or whatever it may yeah. be, what you can do is you can decant that rattle can, let it off gas for sort of 24 hours because of the propellant. Don't, don't put a lid on whatever you decant me into. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> let, let, it, let it off gas and then you can you can thin it like you would thin XF or yeah. LP or whatever and you, you can use it through your airbrush. Mm. Fair play. Mm. Um, Chef A A Ivan, question: Moz, when will your when will the outlaw paints be available from you? Um, about a month's time, because we'll get what I want is because of outlaw paints are not registered on any color scheme charts at the moment. I've asked for extra two boxes to be put on the website. It sounds daft, but you'll bear with me. So when the Outlaw Paints go live, you'll be able to search on the website with the FS number and the um, German number. Was it RFM? And oh, right. So oh, well, we're going to be yeah. doing that. That's a main thing. And also that we will have the alternative. So if you went looking for Tamiya colour, it will come up with an Outlaw colour. And that's that's why we're spending nearly £1,500 on the website. So you know, we, we, we are you know so that we, we we hit the ground running that's the idea um and it, and i'm trying to build i've asked for the website to be built and it's costing a lot of money because when i said it i want the website to be for the modeler so it's looked upon as you know i know what it's like looking at a hand site. i know what it's looking like when you go on these search charts you know you're looking up for an olive drab and you come up with colours and, and things are being linked that aren't relative to olive drab on these sites. The idea is that we will have a particular, you know, so we have the FS9, any other codes that will come with it that I'll have that. And that's why it's taken a bit longer. But I want to get it so it's sorted and that it's easy to update so that when new ranges come, new colours come online, 
we can do it with a CSV file and the pictures and we're done. That's the idea. So, so be about a month, but you can get them from, um, if you give Alex a call, he's got a range. Sprubot still have a, a, a website, check it out. Um, and that's basically where we're, 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 we're headed for that kind of, um, I just want to design the site so it's easy. So as a modeler, I know what I want. So if I want some of this particular color, and also there'll be hopefully an option if you're willing to wait a month there'll be an option of you can send us a shade and jason will make it for you and ship it within a month that's something else that we were discussing but it's it's all up in the air at the moment we're just trying to feel our feet but it's uh and we will be you know we will be honoring whatever what's what's whatever's been honored before we're going to be doing that so but jason has said that if you there was a particular color that you want we, you know, as long as you send him the shade, he can get it matched up. So, be expensive way of doing it. But if people want particular shades, but if it's a good shade, it will end up being in the range. That's the thing, you know. That's what we want to get to. Like I said, we need Israeli colors. That's what we need at the moment. Israeli colors. Um, you know, there's other colors out there that that's needed. So, yeah, it's, it's a on process. The color, going yeah, on the color matching side, Moss. Um, mm -hmm. Just while I, I remember. Um, mm. Just give us a shout afterwards because um, I think yeah. I've got a whole bunch of stuff about color equivalence things that I've already done. Yeah, and because we already have the outdoor stuff, might short yeah. track some of that. So I just yeah. thought of it just then. So mm, yeah. You but to be fair, think... Jason. What's that? Sorry. Thing. Please don't do uh, a close. You know, oh, that color is close. That's what mm. men. You know, men. Men have an AK range of paints. Yeah. In the main bits, they sort of give you a number of something that's close. And it mm. turns out the brand for that chieftain tank was like whole red. Yeah. You know, it's, yes. just, it's not yeah. good. Don't don't do that. Because mm. yeah. you, you order it and then you find because you can't tell from a color swatch on a computer screen, and then you order mm. it and you're like, but well, the other thing to bear in mind, if you take Tamiya, Mr. Hobby, Ravel, Viejo, RLM mm. 66 German Grey, they're all different anyway. So you know mm. which one's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is it. You know, we, we've got to find our feet, and, and that's why if we, if we get it right now, we won't have to worry about it in the future, will we? So, mm -hmm. um, but the idea is is that if you come to our site in your Australian, it will take you to your Australian site, and if you go on the Australian site, there'll be an English box there. You click, and it'll take you to the English one. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm. I looked at Wix. No disrespect. It just. It's too difficult, you know. It's all templated, isn't it? So yeah. this is going to be a bespoke, um, and we've got a payment platform that we're going to be using, which will be covered. So, G, you know, and, and all this DPR and everything. Honestly, it's just like, but that's why I said when when we took it on, I said to my business partner, I said, if we do, it, we've got to do it right. Um, and the idea is that you know, the more paint we sell, the more we can bring back over. So it'd be like you know, increased implements of it. But the thing we've got to get is is the primers back back in stock because that's I think that that's going to sell outlaw paint more than anything. So um, you know, like then, it, if you did use air, I mean, how much extra would it be cost per unit? Is it going to be an extra twenty? It basically, no, it's not that. It, it's quite expensive, right? So basically, if you ship it by air, is one price. If you ship it by boat, it's a third of the price. Right, that's but how different it is. If you're bringing over thousands of bottles at a time, mm. if you add that cost per unit, is it going to be anything worth worrying? Is it going to be 10 people? It, bottles? The, the, it's, yeah, no, it, it, it's more about it's a dangerous product. Oh, okay. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not about that. I'm on about yeah. the cost. Mm. So it's also, it's the also car. heavy though, Nigel. So if you think <laughs> transporting by plane, the volume yeah. and weight. It, mm. it doesn't plateau off like it does by sea freight, you know, yeah. where you can transport just, a container, even if it's got dangerous, like, you know, dangerous to fire with maybe paint paint paint. or filled with lead, yeah. it's the same price. On a plane, it isn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just wondering if if it's like 50 pence on a bottle, does it, you know, is it uh, worth no, going it's for? Lot. It's it, like three it, times. It, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's, you know, it's and it has to be glass bottles. It has to be glass bottles. So, yeah, it, it's, there's a lot of I, you know, I, 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 um, I, 
didn't realize what You're I was getting myself up. into. Am I breaking up? I should be all right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm breaking up a bit. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's a bit low. Close um, the window I, with the port on it. It's uh... yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to get a wire and wire in. I think. I believe I didn't realize it was going to be such a big thing, but it's exciting. I'm excited about it. You know, um, and it's and I think I think the I think I believe in the brand. Like all my paint is outlaw anyway. Um, I use it all the time. I love it. It's it, and it's yeah, it's really good stuff. So. But we, we want to get on the ground running, really. So that's why, you know, we've got the we've got web developer in. We've got key payments in. Then we've got to look at, just got to find a decent shipper that's willing to take it on. And remember, we've also got to get it from where Outlaw Paints is made down to Australia, to the port in Australia, which is apparently a six or seven hour drive, um, which Jason's willing to do. And then on the boat, cross to us. And it's, it's about a six to eight week turnaround. Um, hence why I want to get some of the paint sold now so we can actually start, you know, getting and see what's going to be popular. But you got to remember, you know, I didn't realize they do, I, I'm into military, but they do a phenomenal John Deere green. They do a brilliant uh, Caterpillar beige, you know, spot on as well, you know. And also, I'm not going to aim just for the scale model market. You've got the die casters who love a good paint to do their die cast with. And the RT market. So the idea is, is to try and envelop into them markets as well. And the model um, train. Don't forget the model train model market. Train. Yeah. So that's it. So we, we've had good discussions. Uh, Jason's excited. I'm excited. And mm -hmm. and we've got we've got the financial backing for it as well. So um, as I said, it's, uh, it's one of those things. But anyway, moving on. Um, what's everyone working on at the moment? If multiple projects, what's the one you're enjoying the most? Um, for me, I've got no projects on the go at the moment, but I will be doing the Liberator this week, the new FX Liberator. I'm going to be doing that this week. Anyone how many, else? How many you got on the bench, Nice. <laughs> how, <many projects? laughs> um, how many projects have I got on the go? Two B17s, hmm. a Lancaster, an A20, another model I'm not going to mention, and this piece of shit here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I'm really enjoying seeing you putting that together. It's um, it's a beautiful, beautiful model. But I'll tell you what, the person that wrote the instructions for this, they, they must have been the they mean shag it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, and they've got like, you'll see it in part six, I think. There's like a about a two millimeter long, one and a half millimeter square peg to hold the horn onto the bulkhead. But like to fit the exhaust manifold to the engine, it's like, where is it? There's nothing mm -hmm. there. It's just, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's painful. It really is painful. Yeah, but I, it's really got my mojo going because I love a ta I love a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the idea behind it, wasn't it, to restart your mojo so it's achieved. Yes, yeah. achieved. I've got the um, I've got the border model 88 millimeter on the way, and the Airfix Walrus. And the Airfix mm. B24. So, like, I need some kits to get on the really, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> because of you, Nigel, because of you, I bought this at the weekend. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. It's a handful, but it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very mini artish, isn't it? Yeah. What manufacturer is that, boss? Thunder models. Thunder models. Thunder models. Oh, Thunder models. Okay. They Thunder are models. models. What am I working on? So I'm I've got this to review as well. <laughs> oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, wow. That's blocked on the past. Nice. <laughs> got that to review as well. What are you up to then, Luke? What are you doing at the moment? So I'm still working on, over a year later, the Tacom 35th scale Apache. Um, Jesus. But I still stand by that kit. It's, it, it, it's phenomenal. But like you said, the instructions, you may you may as well set fire to them. It's the same company. Yeah, yeah. And I, I built mine predominantly. I'm really, really lucky. A good friend of mine, Jim Clark, lives in Arizona. And he's got an air base next to him. Well, because he was the head aircraft judge for IPMS USA, he knows someone that knows someone. So he has access to that air base. So when the Apaches came back from the sand pit, 
and they were all weathered up and he literally got up close and personal with him and he sent me about 600 sort of walk around reference pictures wow. of every bit of that aircraft mm. uh, so i've built mine predominantly from reference pictures or still am so i've got that i've got what else am i working on i'm working on the zvezda 48 scale hind p which i'm doing as a hungarian air force are you doing a yeah. video build of that yes you're getting stick loads Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, only, I've only put one one video out and i took a leaf out of your book and uh, which i've never done before so i made all comments pre-approved yeah so i see them before they hit the channel yeah and i must have deleted 80 85 comments that wow. <laughs> they weren't from, they weren't from modelers they they were just because it's what it is mm. I, I was all sorts of nasty things according to those comments you know mm. but but that's the world we live in isn't it that's the world we live just in. be careful, um, careful with any 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 mail that's got russian stamps on it luke yeah i've already got the kit i don't I, I don't need to order anything else. And I, and my argument is, and whether people agree or not, I bought that kit from a retailer. So what's happened is, obviously that's been going on for about two years, what's happening over there. A lot of these retailers had this stock on their shelves way yeah. before any suggestion of an invasion or war or anything like that. So the retailers have already paid for that. They've already paid. <laughs> stock so all these retailers are sat there with with essentially money sat on their shelves that they they can't get rid of they've already paid for it mm. but anyway yeah i've got a few comments on that video um what else it's sad really isn't it uh, i just I just make a comment on how stupid it is i did some quinta studio reviews and i got absolutely hammered yeah, well, it. I'm putting the Quinta set in that, so we'll see what happens. If you go to the PM model store in Ukraine, which is Ukraine's biggest model shop, they stock every single line that Quinta make. Yeah. And they're in Ukraine. Yeah. So why is some British guy in his bedroom moaning at me on his keyboard that I've got a Russian bit of plastic on my bench, you know? Mm. Oh, God. It's just not worth it. Mm. But I'm also I'm currently building... Um, a Russian ICBM launcher, the big trumpeter one. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it, but there's no way I'm putting it out there. No mm. way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just the world we live in. So it is what it is. And I'm also working on, which is to answer that question, the one I'm enjoying the most. And I'll probably say so far, it's probably one of the best kits I've ever built. And that's the Edelweiss tank from Zuki yeah. Mora that's rare as rocking all shit now. But <laughs> you can't get it. I was very fortunate. Someone that subscribes to the channel sent it to me with all of the aftermarket that Zuki Mora released at the time, including the crew, the lighting set, everything. And it is just sublime. It is, is it so a what if? Is it a what if? The Edelweiss, it, it is a what if. It's it's loosely based on a Panzer IV. Mm. So back in the sort of early 2000s, they released this set. I think it was Sega that released uh, a video game called Valkyria Chronicles. And it was like an anime mm. role playing type game. And, th and there was two main tanks in that one called the Edelweiss, which is based loosely on a Panzer IV, and one called the Shamrock, which I've now got as well. Um, and Zukimura released kits of those tanks with lots of aftermarket P resin bits, lighting sets and all that stuff. But it was like a limited run, I believe. So they only made so many, but because it's anime and because it's a video game, people will buy those kits that are never going to build them because they're memorabilia from the game series and everything else. So consequently, the price went up and up and up and the rarity went up and up and up. And it's always been a grail build for me. Um, but he said he would send it to me as long as I built it. And I, literally, when I was cutting the first couple of parts off the sprue, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm cutting this kit up, you know, because it's so rare. Mm. But it is, honestly, it's just amazing. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm throwing everything at it. So I'm scratch building the base, in, you know, the aesthetic of the game and, and mm. all that. But I'm loving it, yeah. 
It's, it's going to take a special kick to do that. Are you doing a video of that, Luke? Yeah, it's on the channel now. Yeah, I think there's three parts already up there. Okay, so I trip so much I look at your channel, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, you're a busy man, Nigel. You're a busy man. <laughs> That's trouble when you're trying to edit, <coughs> make your own videos, watch other people's. It, yeah, you I very don't. rarely watch anyone else's. Yeah, I, 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 I do. always have Nigel on the background because he's got a very soothing voice. <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah, yeah, it tells me right out. I'm falling asleep on the bench, mate. It's I sound like <laughs> a little girl. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time in Gloucester. I, I like that accent. I could listen to John Alec all day long. Yeah, yeah. John Alex. Yeah. John Alec. Yeah, yeah John Alec. Alec. I'll I'll Hi guys, it's John here. Yeah, we're gonna build in a tank today. It's like ASMR, oh. isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> way it's not. It's just the way it is. It is, it is just like that. Is hi guys. Today we should do that like that celebrity series there used to be, where like you read bedtime stories. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. That'd be, yeah. He could, he could start a new channel. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Pe people would people would watch that. Yeah, they would. Well, I go I go well, to I'll bed. I to be fair, I go to bed listening to rain on on a canvas or in a mm. driving in a storm. I love all that. I put the headphones on and I'm I just listen to that and I just fall asleep. I mean, I work predominantly. I work night shifts, so I sleep during the day. Yeah, and and that's problematic just with ambient noise, you know, because mm. it's daytime. So I always listen to, which chills me out. Something. Japanese meditation music. Mm. And I just have that on in the background the whole time in bed. And honestly, I'm not like, I mean, I take some fairly strong medication to go to sleep, but I am yeah. out like, I am out like I am out like a light. And it mm. is very soothing and yeah. Mm. Sounds it's good for us. Mm. Um, what about you, Alex? What are you working on at the moment? Um few things i've got um so i'm still doing the tamiya 112 scale lotus 49 as a commission um so did that in british racing green today got the first coat mm. got the uh, the yellow stripe on it so that's starting to come together um didn't do it at all with uh, the the order of the instructions that tamiya have you uh, try to to put it together because if you did it in that because it's got a load of chrome parts of course it's an old 1970s kit um, it's not been the easiest build, but it is quite satisfying, um, especially because mm. it's somebody else, so I can't just like throw it at the wall or something. Um, a lot of sanding. Mm. <laughs> uh, what I've enjoyed more, though, is I'm finishing off ICM's Beaufort in uh, 148 scale, and uh, I just put the, again, Outlaw paints, because um, yeah. like you, Moss, I've, I've kind of switched over completely to, to using Outlaw yeah. for most of my stuff. Um, so I've just done that in sky uh, dark green and uh, RF dark green and brown. That's going to be a South African version, nice. on the version. So, uh, so that's been really nice actually. Kit goes together really, really well. It's got full interior, look really nice. <laughs> mm. Yep, shop still up and running. Yeah, I was in there today. Yeah, <laughs> in there today. It's yeah. still <laughs> lacquer thinner because I I spray a lot of outlaw paints in there. <laughs> yeah. They love it. They will go in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Annette McCall, I've lost the spinner off an Airfix 148 Spitfire. Would Airfix be able to send me another one if I ask nicely enough? Yeah, there is a there's a spare parts. Um, depending on which which Spitfire you've got, um, you can contact them. Go to the website. Um, I did a video on it actually about getting spare parts, so you can check out that video. Oh, broken parts. Um, but yeah, there, there might be a um, a fee for the part and for the postage and, and um, because they use um recorded it's it is a bit pricey on it but if you if you lost the part it's not their fault is it really but they are very helpful they do have a spares department if you check out their website and it's uh, i bought a hot screw off them recently and it was 13 pounds including the postage yeah and, um they sensibly cut the sprue up into it was a big sprue for a 24 scale kit mm. and they cut the sprue up into four so it sort of went into a large envelope size so thing you know it's, Mm. Pretty, I thought it was a bargain. It's great. Yeah, Moz, have you got the Chrome from Outlaw Paints? No, they've all sold out, but that's on the list to be reordered probably at the end of the month. Um, I'm going to get 20 bottles of that hopefully because it's a good Chrome as well. Um, can you get a tinted canopy for a Tamiya F35A? 
What scale? Yeah, what scale? It's got to be in the kit. I was going to say yeah. the 48th one's got a tinted canopy. Yeah. Must be, it must be in the 72nd mm -hmm. one. Would an STL file work on a humble printer? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it will. <laughs> if you but put you it on to... top of the printer. <laughs> I did laugh, actually, because when Airfix did that um, paper plane, didn't they, that model, there's the one thing you can't print on the humble printer is that paper plane. <laughs> 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 it's funny, isn't oh, it? When we were, yesterday, must we spent a lot of time talking about that printer? <laughs> we did, yeah. That was, uh, and the guy who who was behind that is no longer at the company, so that says it all, doesn't it? You know. <laughs> um, Captain, VF, Captain VFC's there. Hello, all. How are we all doing? We're doing great. Thank you very much. Uh, question: Who's ordered the Liberator, and should you avoid Airfix's pre-orders? And just order on release. Wow, that's a, that, that's a pun. I ordered it this morning. Mm. You should order from your local uh, model shop and not mm, pre-order. That's what I did. <laughs> Would be my I, answer. I get all my pre-orders from Hannans because you always get ten percent off, and mm. Hannans are normally one of the first to get the stock. Yeah. Um, or Chad Lamb. I must actually buy some through <laughs> Malik to support his shop, actually, but um. I was going to ask, actually, what do you think of it, Moss? That was a, a shock. That wall was turning up this week. What happened there? Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. There's, really there's, there's a few that's held back at the minute, so that that will, you know, that will they'll all come out soon, I guess. Yeah, because even Han Hannah six isn't there this month coming out in June, and it mm. suddenly appeared in April. Mm. So, really looking forward to that. Hopefully, it'll come tomorrow. On my list, I think it was June. Is was, was it on your list as well? Alex, on that it was due out in June, June that walrus. Mm. Alex, I I won't comment can you hear me? because I can. Can you hear me? But yeah. on the, on that list, it was June. It was due that walrus. Yeah, that's why. Uh, I mean, you know, as per Thumper in Bambi, you know. Yeah. If you can't say something nice, you shouldn't say anything at all. So I'll say nothing at all because I have nothing nice to say about Airfix pre-orders, uh, their stock system, customer services, or anything Check at the out. moment. Yeah, I've got the rep coming to see me on Friday, and he's in for a, yeah, a rough ride, I can tell you. Can I ask you a question, Alex? As a retailer, you know when we get the, the, the email from Airfix press release, like today, Liberator available now, do you get stock of that before that comes out? No. So we, we, get a, we get a report of uh, what's it called? Something like the uh, available stock availability report or something. It shows you if you've mm. got um, pre-orders on that, um, but only if they're available. So I can't, there's no web portal for, for Humbrol. Um, they're still mm. working on that. Um, so have you got liberators on order? Uh, I, I know I have. I couldn't tell you. Uh, how many or, or, when? or when they're due wow. um, it's yeah it's uh, it's not a good system one that um, that I could support uh, or make sense of having been in commercial business to business for almost 30 years it's the one of the worst supply systems I've ever seen so yeah mm. uh, I mean we don't even get notified so the fact that the liberator came out today I didn't know until I saw it on our discord chat Mm. I got an email. I got an email. I got an email. Oh, privately, I got an email, not as a return. Oh, right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> why would I need to know as a retailer? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but even if it's available, if, say, I ordered three liberators, yeah, and I haven't ordered anything else because maybe I'll just put a big order in from Airfix previously and stuff, they wouldn't ship them because that doesn't hit the minimum order. So even if it's a pre-order, that those will sit there until my orders hit that pre-order, and then they'll ship. Even if I ordered them in January. Wow. Yeah, right. it's a shit system. Have you got walruses yet? I've got them on order. I haven't got them yet. No. Hannah's has got them. I'm sure they have. Hannah's got them on Thursday. Yeah. Again. All right. Say nothing. Let's um, <laughs> move on. What's Moss working on? Not Moss. <laughs> 
Ms. Modler is working on a Saab 105, I think it was. Was it 105? Yeah, Saab 105. There's been a question from Fenris, Lexi, if you want to answer this. By the way, um, Dave Malarkey says, uh, hello, Ms. Modler, hope you're mending well. But he's put down, um, life colour metals are pretty good then. Have only ever really used Vallejo and I've been happy, but that looks great. So I'm assuming that you're really happy with the life colors. Yeah, I mean, my entire paint collection is pretty much that now. Um, I really, really like them. No one really uses them and they're not as straightforward as some in our brushes, but like, I really like them and it's really shiny and pretty. Mm. Is that an acrylic, a lacquer or enamel? What is it? Acrylic. Is it smelly? No. Oh. Not at all. Not at all. And this is both airbrush and hand painted, so like oh, there's okay. both on there. I don't really I've not seen life colour for sale anywhere. There's only like one well e models and Amazon have them, but it's all yeah. done through like airbrush dot com, which is like that the importer and distributor. I really mm -hmm. like them. Yeah. Where are, where are they from? Live colour. Where are they based? It's Italy. Italy. Yeah. Mm. Sean Tolbert, just been in Halfords after a long time and the price of their grey pr plastic primer has gone through the roof. <laughs> I got told that is it what was what what was the brand that they have for their there's a brand that they do, not Halfords brand, but like a, a a main brand and they said the price has gone up a third on a lot of the rattle cans in there um so question has anyone had problems with humble gloss varnish or humble <coughs> deco flix deco fix where your nice paint just drips off the model when you add a decal on it or is it just me well firstly no, um no, the humble gloss varnish um i would um Put it down the drain, you know. Or <laughs> put it down the drain. drain you damage the environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Drip on the drain. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite effective for that, but yeah. Can be honest with you, I use Humble Decal Fix for years, years and years. Never had a problem with it. Like the Decal Fix and their Masco, pretty good stuff to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, never had a problem with the Decal Fix. I used it for years. Yeah, I use um, um, Michael Set, Michael So now. I do have a bottle of Mr. You know, the, the real heavy duty one from Tamiya. Yeah. The really heavy duty one. Uh, what's it um, but at the end of the day. Mark Mark Set. Mr. Mark Fit Super Strong. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That stuff will dissolve paint. Hmm. Hmm. You gotta be careful with it, but sometimes you have to use. No, it. I, I I said to Gary in chat yesterday, he, he just don't don't flood the decal with a decal yeah. the decal setting solution because mm. you do you will take acrylic paints off. The thing is with decals, so you, I a lot of people don't do it, but I do. When I pull the brush out, mm. I just tap it on the side of the rim to get rid of the blodge. And yeah. then just use what the what excess is left on the bristles, and that's it. You know, you don't flood yeah. decals. You don't. You shouldn't have to. Um, you're better off trying. You know, two or three times. You know, the the decals on that lorry I did. They they took two or three coats, but it was yeah. little and often, if you know what I mean. Um, I, and I, I was well, to say I I use decal X for like. Mm -hmm years and i used to use it very very liberally like i wasn't dry on it and i never really had any issues with it there were some varnishes mm. it had issues with but to be honest that's mostly because it was like humbrol's varnish if i was in a pinch that would always react with stuff but mm. i never really had any issues mm. with decal fix i've still got some i think but i now mm. use microsoft microsoft like everyone else yeah um in the comments, somebody has said they reckon the deck will fix attacks acrylic. So I don't know. But surely you wouldn't use deck fix unless you put a, some sort of 
cloak uh, coat on it like a um you know, so i know where gary's coming from on this because uh he he's <laughs> he asked me it was um sprayed with tamia uh on primer yeah uh mm -hmm. coat of humbrol gloss varnish and then humbrol decal fix and it just took the, the, the humbrol gloss varnish is the problem mm. yeah. how long did he leave it to dry before he put the decals on uh i think it was oh, over six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't very rarely do I clear coat before I decal, mm. and I know that that's a hornet's nest. Some people do, some people don't. Whatever works for you, that's fine. I um, always do. So there you go. So Nigel always does. I very rarely do. Um, I don't use humble decal fix. Um, I use my no. set, my soul, like everyone else, yeah. uh, and I use uh ump setting solutions which are very very aggressive mm. um so they take a bit of getting used to they're a very aggressive setting solution but they work phenomenally um and then i clear coat over the top of the decal before we move into weathering and stuff like that but i would never i've used humbro varnish once years and years ago it wasn't their gloss to be fair it was their matte coat and honestly, the model looked like I was putting it on a snow diorama. It just oh, yeah, dried. Yeah, that issue once. You're white. With like yeah. this white chalky residue all over it. I managed to fix it because I clear coated it in something else. And it it, can't, it didn't fix it all, but it fixed it enough. Yeah. Um, but for me, if you want to use acrylic clear coats, I cannot speak highly enough of VNS. All, all yeah. of theirs, matte, satin, and gloss. They See, I, I generally wouldn't use an acrylic clear coat over acrylic um, camouflage. I, I would go to a different one, like a lacquer or something. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, because basically, then you've got no chance of you know whatever you put on top attacking the um, the acrylic because you've sealed it. You know, it's yeah. a yeah. different layer. So you're effectively creating barrier layers. Um, and something again that I can then use white spirits on to lack as ideal um, for the oil wash, you know, mm -hmm. and then again, seal that in with a matte coat, probably from a rattle can, you know, so you've got different layers. I think the problem with decal fix is that unlike a lot of other solutions, like microsol is acidic, you know, mm -hmm. it's basically very dilute spirit vinegar. Uh, I think the decal fix is the other side of the spectrum. It's actually used um, an ammonium base. So it's quite basic. Yeah. And I just, think that is the problem i think i don't have experience with it directly myself so i'm kind of guessing but from a chemistry point of view i, I think that's the issue so yeah in that you've you know you've got the the clear coat which is humbrol which is apparently the same kind of edge of the ph spectrum so i think it's just reactivating <laughs> put on the decal fix the one thing mm. i would say if people are using acrylic clear coats like aqua gloss um, or Tamiya X22 or whatever, quite often when you use Set and Soul, you will get a white stain yeah. around the decor. Yeah, and it, I, I get people sending me photos all the time. What am I going to do? Just leave it. It might take a day or two, but it will disappear. If you want a really good, solid, rock hard, really good clear coat, mm. Tamiya LP9 is absolutely... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tamiya LP9. I don't know what the um, um, outlaw stuff's like, Os. I've quite enjoyed it. Yeah, it's good stuff. And they do a clear gloss. Yeah, they do a clear gloss. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. quite good. Um, they do. Um, yeah. So you've got your gloss clear, and mm -hmm. then you've got your uh, your satin clear. So you've got like the you know give it a really to, good shake. I'll have to get um, some of them off you. Yeah. Oh. Um, but um, they also do a really good 4K as well. So. Right. Um, but yeah, it's uh, see, I I don't like using matte. I like I like to finish off my war models with a a satin finish anyway. So I'm going that way lately. <laughs> yeah. In old. Oh, I've know. tended to use things like army paint, army painter. I think it's called anti shine matte varnish mm. because yeah. that isn't matte. It does tend to be like a slightly yeah on the matte side of semi gloss. Satin. If you know what I mean, you can yeah, have that kind yeah. of satin silky look matte. or you can have that slightly mm. matte and that kind of is on that if you but want yeah. matte, that stuff there yeah is matter than a matte thing on a matte day yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Honestly, that stuff is so mm -hmm. mad. But you, you rub it with your finger, it comes off. It's just... Yeah. It's if you want a really hard, really matte coat, then De La Rowney Artists um, yeah, yeah. Is, mm. uh, is rock. I mean, it's, you know, you can fire bullets at it. It's not the acrylic stuff, the, uh, the solvent-based stuff. Uh, and it's super matte. I mean, it's just like, you could put it on 4K and it would just be like flat afterwards. <laughs> yeah. What's that, what's that called? Windsor and Newton Galleria matte, artist yep. matte. Thin, yep. about 60 40 and that's that's proper flat like this mm. and, it, it's, and it's more or less the same thing isn't it for it's the robust. Yeah, yeah it's robust yeah definitely uh, i would in my opinion avoid that, What's the that one? yeah yeah, yeah. the artist matt that can you thin that with leveling thinners yes lou mm -hmm. I yeah. used that stuff originally that you had in your hand there. The I, think they, I, I think they've changed it because yeah, it was really true. good. My experience of that is you're lucky if it works. <laughs> That's all I yeah. <laughs> See, I don't know. I, I, I'm very, very particular now. I think there's a reason why <clears throat> mediums like that come in glass. And when it comes in plastic, I think that's where the issues arise. You think? Because is phenomenal yeah that's and enough you, you can either thin it mm. or you can spray it neat as long as you turn your pressure up mm. and it, it's it's phenomenal but i just i i think there's there's a there's an argument to be had with glass and plastic with our mediums mm -hmm. yeah, I really yeah. believe that you know like for instance you know yeah you know the, i'm sure the vallejo goes off in plastic, I think that if you've had a layer for a while and it's in that plastic, and you know, in the winter you've got your, your heat in your house, your heat you warm, and the plastic's going to get warmer quicker than it, than the glass is. That's for like an example. I think as a you know, LP always comes in in their jars, don't they? You know, so yeah. um, I think there's a lot to be said in glass, and Outlaw Paints come in glass, he doesn't use plastic apart from the lid. Um, that's got a double seal anyway. You've got the seal underneath, which is a which is which is a bit of a bind when you take off the lid and you they got to use your mm. fingernail to poke off. But you know that it's sealed, you know. And I, I just think there's an argument there with buying things plastic, buying things in glass, you know. But just sort of Dave Coombs has asked many modern armor kits any good, just ordered a Rolls Royce on car. That's the thirty fifth. Yeah. That yeah. That all um, make it so lovely. They well, go main, yeah. That particular yeah. one has got a lot of accuracy issues. Mm. I think they've used yeah. a restored museum piece for their reference, and it's apparently it's got like nineteen fifties wheels or something. Yeah. Something like I that. Mean, yeah. Meng Meng as a kid, from a modelling point of view, phenomenal. Yeah, they're, they're really good. Sometimes, like Nigel said, and that one's renowned for it, accuracy can be a little bit questionable. If I was going to build like a World War One armored car or whatever, I'd probably go copper stain models. The only one there is no else. There's Roden, but I mean, you can say that of a lot of yeah. the Chinese manufacturers, can't you? They've they've come, you know, they've got a lot of technology. There's a lot of like excellent modeling there. Yeah, yeah. You're not bothered about accuracy particularly. You want something that looks, you know, good or you don't care about that. They're fantastic. It's if you want something accurate, then you've either got to check your sources and be prepared to do some like scratch building or alteration, or you know, yeah. as uh, as either said, go on recommendations of modelers who really know those subjects. Yeah. Right. DP oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Sorry, oh. Alex, what did you say that paint was called? That Matt Clear? Uh, well, I think it's the one that you had, the Windsor and Newton. Or Dale, Dale Brownie. Dale Brownie it smells like a normal. Yeah, you might have yeah. a different one. They do, I know Windsor and Newton, I think they call it Galleria. Galleria, with, yeah. Yes. With an acrylic. Um, I'll, go, mate, I'll show you. Let me find it while you're chatting. Because I've, I've seen somebody, they're using Windsor and Newton Galleria acrylic medium to glue down ship's wooden decks. Yeah. Apparently it's much yeah. better than glue. Yeah, 
DB Gumby just asked a question. What's the best gloss varnish, please? Or airbrushing Vallejo 62062. Oh, that's that's there, nice. yeah. That one there. Thank you. We just, uh, we just discussed clears, didn't we? Yeah. I think yeah. we just established Vallejo is not the place to go for no, a gloss. Not the place, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, with that Vallejo one, I think it's uh, it's not thin enough. Um, the pressure's not high enough. Oh, it's just a um, Will Outlaw look at having a range of correct Royal Naval colours included modern? We've had a discussion with Jason because he's got quite a lot. There's a lot in the mix with Australian and stuff. And I was saying that a lot of it could be transferred over to UK. But keep, um, email me that and I'll, I'll email Jason just to confirm what his plans are with Royal Naval. Um, yeah, there's a lot more to be added to the range, definitely. Um, Deutsch, Greg and Marina as well. Yeah. Well, like I was, like I was saying to him, you know, he's an Australian company, so he's, you know, he's gone heavily with Australian colours. But then, if you actually look, I reckon a third of them, you could easily put an English label on them, because it would be in English colours as well. But yeah. that's yeah. the idea of the FS colours, you see. So you can look at FS. It may say Australian, da-da-da, but it'd be the same as a UK equivalent. So we need to talk we need to talk about that with it as well. So, um Every time I put down VMS XXL matte or gloss on Tamiya paints, I get a white sludge over the top. Is it not compatible? I do that all the time, never on an issue. Probably yeah. put it down too heavy. If you put it down too heavy, it sort of almost like crystallizes, doesn't it? Yeah. So with VMS, if you look at their YouTube channel, they've got um, how-to guides on all of their products, which is really useful, to be fair. So I've found with the mat, and it is counterintuitive. So mm. with the mat, you have to put it down wet, which it, which is counterintuitive because yeah. you're looking you're looking for a matte finish, aren't you? But you what put you it. Thin down, it with? Say again, mate. What do you thin it with? Uh, I don't thin it. I spray it straight from the bowl. Wow. You must so have the pressure yeah. high then. 0.5 needle. Okay. Mm, at about. Between thirty and thirty-five psi. They, yeah. they recommend a point minimum of a point four needle. Yeah, on the and, it, and it works fine. But you can thin it. I've thinned it with UMP thinner, and I've thinned it with. Uh, I think I've used leveling thinner in the past. Yeah. Well, one thing about thinning any sort of varnish is that's where you're most likely to get problems. Mm. So either use what the the manufacturer recommends. Well, one, either do it neat like, like Luke does. Yeah, and that's what they recommend. It, yeah. or, or test it first because I've used um, Tamiya um, flat varnish, uh, which works fine if you thin it with Tamiya thinners. Even if you put 70% pure alcohol as a thinner instead, you'll get white blotching. Yeah. Mm. It's, so, I get, I'm, I'm not a chemist, but I'm guessing you're changing the chemical makeup of that product, aren't you? Surely. Well, yeah, but uh, Tamiya, uh, Tamiya products are about 70% alcohol, different alcohols, there's butanol yeah, yeah. stuff in there. So I thought 70% ethanol, which is the most miscible of all alcohols, would be okay, but it doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. So I switched to X20A, it was fine. So I suspect um, Darren's problems may be how you're thinning it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're not like, thinning like it, said in the chat, uh, he had tr <laughs> trouble with VMS until he started to flood it using a large needle and high pressure. And that's exactly what VMS recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, but they but sell it, more of it as well, then. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's, really, it's really counterintuitive because yeah. it's well, not. We're all mist coats on everything, aren't we? Yeah, for, everything. But yeah, the gloss. I've not had good results spraying it in the same way as the mat. So flooding it, I've built that up in like maybe five or six layers, thinner layers. Yeah. Um, um, but always, always neat. Never thin. I, I remember what LPJ told me about using VMS. And that is when you, is, is before you spray it, shake the bottle, let it sit for a bit and then spray it. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that said before. Yeah, yeah, um, it really does bubble up big time. Mm. Um, Sean Talbot, it's getting silly now since uh, since China treatment of. <clears throat> How you say that? To be honest, 
<laughs> oh, come on, Matt. Give it a go. Argus. <laughs> Is it Argus? There are no building Chinese manufacturers' kits. Say goodbye to a hell of a lot of these kits, then, including Taco, Meng, Dragon, etc. Yeah, I understand all that, but that's why then get rid of your iPhone, get rid of your Fergus, you know, your television. You know, unfortunately, 60% of everything ever manufactured that's used, you know, is from China. Oh, well, it's, it's got to be know. more than that, hasn't it? If you're looking at components yeah. and stuff, it's well, not really. It's like, you think about it, yeah, I get that, but like electrical wise, yeah. But then you've also got Japan, Korea, India, and mass production yeah. stuff, you know. Even even if you look in the modeling world, you know, Poland's quite big, you know. So, yeah, but it's about 60, 65 or 70 percent, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's a, lot. One. it's a lot. But, you know, it is. Yeah. You know, the only thing is with, with like things like Zvezda, they owned by Russian government, you know. So there's that argument as well. But, yeah, it's all the same, really. It's all the same. Well, the, the point we were making, there, I can't remember who mentioned that, made that question point or make raise that question it was sean wasn't it um the yeah. point we were making was the trouble is is people are yeah was well, sure people are looking at luke building a plastic model of a russian helicopter and straight away they're hammering him because he's supporting russia or whatever yeah. it's a bloody mm. piece of plastic which happens to be molded in the place of in the space of something which was made in russia you know yeah. But it's even got to yeah. the point where if you did an Antonov, you would get a shitload of trouble. An Antonov Ukrainian. Well, I mm. built, was it last year or beginning of this year, I built the Meng book, the anti-aircraft sum. Yeah. Now, that's obviously Soviet, Soviet era. Mm. I built it in Ukrainian army colours. It's made by Meng. So they're not a Russian manufacturer. The amount of grief I got about that when I was putting it together before I painted it. You know why? It makes no sense because the Ukrainian armed forces are using that equipment currently to shoot down Russian aircraft. But do you know uh, why you put a stick? Because that piece of kit is what took out a civilian airliner and killed hundreds of people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but everything we build, if you're a military modeler, Everything we build, whether it's allied, Russian, what whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a weapon of war. Mm. It's designed to do one thing and one thing only. Mm. And that is to kill. It 74,000 US airmen, 74,000 US, just US and just airmen, not ground troops, US airmen lost their lives over Germany in the Second World War. Mm-hmm. 99% of those would have been from flat guns. Yeah. I have had no stick whatsoever from anyone about building this. That's what I was just going to say. A lot so more than any fucking yeah. book has. Or, we, or had a guy, we had a guy, and I won't name him. He was a member of our group. Mm. And he, I call it virtue signaling, basically. So mm. he had a lot of Zvezda kits in his stash a couple of years ago, when it all sort of kicked off. So he made a big deal on the internet about he was getting rid of all his Zvezda kits from his stash. He'd already paid for them. So, you know, that money's already been spent, but he made a big deal of it. He was getting rid of all his Zvezda stuff, anything Russian, whether it was made by Zvezda or not, getting rid of all of it. He then replaced it with World War II German armor. Mm -hmm. And I think you'd have to go a long way to find any military that committed the atrocities that the, the, the German military did during World War II. Well, you know, I mean, to be fair, Luke, just, just, just ask Kanye. That Hitler guy wasn't so bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just misunderstood. He had the right intentions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he had a lot of struggles in his early life. He wrote a book about it. Yeah. 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 I've read that three times. Well, the funny mm. thing is a lot of the German, German armour is sort of stuff that's appropriated from the Czechs yeah. and the Russians, ironically. Mm. So the Marder Three has a is a Czech a Czech chassis. Yeah. And the, the cannon is a is Russian, mm. derived yeah. from a, a Russian uh, anti tank gun. 
I think, and we don't want to turn it into together on a Junkers 88 made in USA. I don't, I don't think we want to turn it into like a political no, no. Um, but like I said, everything that we build, if you're a military modeler, everything we build is a weapon of war. Mm. It is. It's designed for one thing and one thing only. The reason I build it is not because I glorify war. I've been to war six times. It's horrible. No one likes war. No. However, the technology and the engineering that develops in the military world, that's what interests me. Mm. Because, I mean, you take, for example, my job now. So in the UK now, we have something called the trauma network. So for major trauma that happens in the UK, whether that be an RTC, a stabbing, a shooting, whatever it may be, the way that that's now managed in the UK and in the US is a direct copy of the way trauma was managed mm. in Afghanistan. Iraq. Yeah. yeah. And as a result, now thousands upon thousands of civilians that are involved in traumatic incidents worldwide are surviving when 15 20 years ago they'd have died mm. so whether whether we like it or not war does breed advancement yeah. and whether that's in technology medical science wh wh whatever area it may be it does and, yeah. and that's what fascinates me the technology yeah. it's any sort of conflict and competition breeds innovation i yeah. mean you you look at it in the commercial space you know the companies that can innovate look at it in modeling in general Right. If you look at uh, the Chinese companies, they brought in a lot of slide molding. They brought in, you know, cheaper prices. Yeah, that's because of their, um, you know, mm. questionable human rights um, pieces. Yeah. Um, you know, but they they package really well, and they force themselves into the market. They produced like twelve hundred kits in like five years or something. You know, phenomenal. You know. That's part of capitalism generally, you know, they're forcing themselves into the market. But it's forced other manufacturers to look at what they're doing. Mm. You know, would Airfix have reinvented itself if the market was still like it was back in the 80s? Mm. Mm, maybe not, because there mm. isn't the pressure there to. But we've had all of these companies and they're all like building on, and it's great for us because we benefit mm. from all of that. And mm. I mean, at the end of the day, we build what we we think is cool what we like mm, i mean it, it's I not think... driven by ideology is it i'm not no, building cool. a sure, german yeah. tank because i'm a nazi i build it because it's got cool camo or uh, i like the way the angular tank looks or yeah. whatever yeah. i'm fairly sure everyone sat here if you know we all run youtube channels facebook groups instagram whatever it may be and i'm fairly sure that if someone joined a group or subscribed to your channel or whatever that was that way and they only built german ss stuff and then you, you look at their profile picture and they're stood there in an ss uniform you know and all that stuff and then you check their facebook profile and there's a you know they're stood in front of a white power flag or whatever i'm fairly sure that everyone sat here and i think the community a whole as a whole is the same that person would be given short shrift yeah. without a shadow of a doubt just because you're fascinated by the camo scheme or the technology or whatever it doesn't mean that you're glorifying conflict that you're a sympathizer to whichever nation or ideology that that represents it doesn't it doesn't mean that it's a plastic model we're not running the un who cares no. And, and there is a fascination sometimes with the other. I, I remember as a child being fascinated with the Soviet Union because it was yeah. seen as this big enemy. You know, yeah. the, the you know, Iron I grew, yeah. yeah, I grew up under the threat of you know the four minute warning and imminent nuclear annihilation. It was terrifying, but I was still fascinated by like the the MiG twenty five. You know, the, and the mystery being debunked of that when it you know landed in in Japan uh, with the defection. You know. There is a fascination with all these things. It doesn't mean that you subscribe to the ideology of that country. Mm -hmm. I think what mm -hmm. what Stalin and communism did in, in Russia was a massive setback to the Russian people. And, you know, millions died under horrific circumstances. But yes, a MiG-25 yes, or MiG-31 yeah. looks cool, you know. And they're, and they're absolutely fantastic modeling subjects because 
the Russians don't look after them like we look after typhoons. They let them get beat, they leave them outside, they fade, they get covered in moss. You see SU 27s, don't you, with all the, the sides of the cockpit or yeah. pilots have been clabbering. They don't go and touch them up like we do, they just leave it. Uh, when your engines only last a couple of flights, what's the point? <laughs> I, um, I, I got two points I want to raise. But firstly, was that, yeah, I do get the idea of the Russian thing and the Ukraine thing is a sore subject, same as the Israel thing. You know, I did that JS3 vintage classic tank from Airfix yeah. and I lost a, a, a raft of subscribers. And it wasn't even Russia, it was Soviet Union. You know, they, they, they don't know the history. Mm. But mm. going back to war, one of the biggest things that ever happened in this world was the race for space. Yeah. We had yeah. Russia versus, and it was, in fact, it was brought out of how far can we get this missile to go up, yeah. you know, um, and the fact that they put that satellite, that all it did was go bing, 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 you know, Russia did, and Americans shit themselves, didn't they? Right, that's it, you know, we need to get our not, own... Not, not being funny, Mark. The, the whole Star Wars thing was a fantasy. Yeah. Of lasers in space to destroy the missiles yeah. from Russia. Yeah. It was bollocks. It was yeah. it was propaganda. Mm -hmm. But when they when Russia said we're not going to bother with space anymore, the Americans shit themselves again and said we need to get all these scientists involved in space again. How are we going to do it? We'll do a space station. Let's invest our time, effort, and money into a space station mm -hmm. so that they had something to do. So these um, scientists weren't thinking of ways of making the atom bomb bigger or easier or whatever. So there's that side of it as well. But the second point I was going to raise was everyone has a conscious, everyone has a moral dilemma on what they build and why and when and how and what model companies they use. If a, if you want to build Vesta, that's fair enough. Me personally, I know that anything that's new on the market from Vesta is owned by the uh, it's a Russian company, so it's owned by Russia. So if you buy a kit, you'll put money into their pass. Mm. That's my moral dilemma. And I can say, you know, I you know, I can buy a Chinese kit and you know the the um human rights record of China is fucking disgusting, you know, these death vans going around killing people, you know, it's that's the way of the world. It's up to the modeler themselves and who write what right have you got to attack and slay a modeler because of their thoughts on building a particular brand or kit or whatever? None of your business. But that, but that you the world we live in, the you world know. we live in, the internet, it, it is what it is. Uh, and you can't let yourself get wound up by it. Yeah. yeah. And I think as YouTubers, we kind of, you know, I mean, the reason we all still have YouTube channels after a couple of weeks is that we've got pretty thick skins, right? Or have learned yeah, really. a strategy to deal with that because you uh, do get loads of crap. Yeah. Uh, because none of us and none of the people that I associate with, there's nothing on our channels that is inflammatory. There's no, mm -hmm. you know, there's no sympathizing with a particular ideology or there's none of that. You know, it is a hobby. Personally, to that's what must say about Zvezda, I personally, because of my own views, wouldn't buy new tool Zvezda. Yeah. Kits. However, I have got Zvezda kits, but I've had those in the stash for years. Oh, and yeah. I, I didn't buy those direct from Zvezda. I bought them from a local model retailer. Who's on his ass pretty much 365 days a year anyway, because there's not a lot of money in it. So he he bought those kits from his distributor or whatever. That's money sat on his shelf. Yeah. Would I buy a new a new tools of Esther for him? No, because he doesn't buy new tools of Esther stuff, you know, mm. because of yeah. his conscience. It's exactly the same. I mean, for me in the shop, because I had the same, you know, moral quandaries like, do I stock Sylvester stuff? And mm. I do have Sylvester stuff on the shelves. It's pre-invasion stock yeah. from my mm -hmm. distributor um, that sits there. I don't sell much, you mm -hmm. know, and if somebody wanted a new tooled one, that might be a different thing. Nobody mm -hmm. has asked me for a new tooled Sylvester yeah, kit. I, I, I think that's the general, 
not many people are buying new tools of those systems. No, but that's the moral dilemma. That was the moral dilemma that I had. Do I, you know, I I went to Bubba's Model Railway and they had Vesta tanks there and they were cheap. And, mm -hmm. and at the time, it, the war had just started. And I said to him, I said, you know, if I was tempted to build that tank, I probably would buy that kit. But anything new that comes on the market, I wouldn't. Mm. Um, but, you know, but that's my, it's a moral choice for me. Not to buy but it is, it's you know? a very personal mm. choice. And I yeah. certainly wouldn't criticise anyone mm. if they did buy a new tools of Vesta mm. kit. Or I wouldn't. It's not, my, it's not my place to cast moral judgment on somebody. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really uh, old-fashioned phrase that applies, and, and they don't apply today, of course, in the world of 2024, the crazy clown world which we seem to find ourselves, mm -hmm. is people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones or mm -hmm. let let he who has no mm -hmm. sin amongst you cast the first stone. There's my yeah. religious upbringing coming through. Yeah. Not that I'm at all religious, but... We've done yeah, politics. If, if you really don't really... have <laughs> any Chinese stuff in your house, if you don't buy anything Russian, if you are absolutely saintly pure then maybe you have something to, to say. Even so, you should keep your nose into your own business and not other people's. Absolutely. But yeah. let's face it, none of us are, you know, 100% clean on that front. Oh. So what right? It's the same like with gatekeeping our hobby and saying, you know, what's right or what color's right or how many rivets, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just like, unless somebody asks for your opinion on something, you know, keep it to yourself. And, and, and your, your opinion is your own. And I was yeah. having this discussion with a, a very well-known modeler in the US just yesterday. We, we recorded a podcast with him. And unfortunately now, so for what we do mm. on YouTube, on the internet, social media and all that, we are a very, very small percentage of people that build models. Yes. very small we're not the elite we're not anything like that but we're a very small percentage that take the hobby to the next level and we share our hobby in a very public way mm. but for every one person that does that there's probably a thousand that uh sat in front of the tv with a dinner you know a dinner tray putting a 70 second spitfire together brush painting it on a, a sunday afternoon or whatever yeah, they're they're the main people in the hobby, without yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. And you you can see that when you go to shows and you chat to people. Most people that I chat to at shows don't even know about YouTube. They don't even know, like it's not a thing. But they still enjoy the hobby in their way. Mm. And it's for them to enjoy it in their way. Whether I think that Spitfire doesn't look as good as it should. That's good. I'm not they're not putting it in a competition. I'm not judging it against others. They're happy with it. They've got the enjoy if they've enjoyed the process, they're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. 100 mm. percent I am like, um, like what does, for example. Yeah. I don't do that. The stuff Nigel does is phenomenal. He'll take a kit and he, he'll basically re-engineer it. Mm. You know, yeah, I, I, I he does do moan about it a lot, though, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's very, very oh, good. Oh. <laughs> but you're very good at it, Nige. You're yeah. very good at doing that. And your attention to yeah. detail is, is phenomenal. For What's me, like that? Oh, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't give me the fulfillment from my hobby that I get from my hobby. I'm not actually that asked whether that particular nut or bolt is in the right place or it, it doesn't it, it doesn't play on my mind to the point where I'd then cut it off, resin cast my own and, and, and do it that I don't build that way. I, 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 I like that with nuts and bolts, but that the anchor on that shiner was, was a joke. Painted it brass and stuck it on. This <laughs> sounds a little bit like starting off with "I'm not racist," but Nigel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about that that Dora White railgun, Nigel? The, the, one, one. I've got 144 scale, 170 second scale, and 135 scale. Oh, yeah, that that drove me around the bend. Yeah, because they're all wrong. They're all complete. They've all got the barrel too long. 
And because they know the barrel is a certain length and they've made it too long, everything else is over scale. So yeah. they look like with the long barrel. Mm. So. I, I think every everyone's approach is is different to their hobby, isn't it? And and there's nothing wrong with that. And the moment people, and we all know who they are, the moment people start criticizing others mm. for their approach to their hobby and everything else, that's when you start to alienate people. And ultimately, if that was allowed to to grow within the community, that's what's going to kill the hobby. Yeah, because people okay. just won't, people just won't bother. I don't get criticised, but I do sometimes get two dislikes in about the first twelve seconds of the video going out. <laughs> well, that that means that you you've made it, Nigel. If you've got your own, yeah. yeah. If you, if you get, I, I've, I've often got a dislike before the video goes live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh, there he is, the, the little hater troll, whoever he yeah. is, uh, or or she, or they. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just or like. It. So you dislike just the idea of this video? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> you do you? I know, I know. There's at least five people, at least five. There's probably a lot more. But looking at the percentages of likes against dislikes, which only you can really see now as the creator. Yeah. Right? You used to be able to see dislikes. You can't. Uh, but as the uh, creator, there's an app for that, Luke. I'll send you. Yeah, one. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> but I know there's at least five people. Like you said, Nigel, within the first 10 seconds of any video I put out or any live stream or whatever it may be, dislike. And I'm like, well, I'm not that bothered because it's interaction regardless. You um, look at the screen now, look. One, two, three, four. Tell him, Nigel. And how sad must that individual be? That they yeah, wait they're, so they're, they're, they're just waiting for you to do something on the internet so they can dislike it and feel better about themselves for 20 years. The thing <laughs> is, they must have my notification bell ticked because yeah, the video right. goes out, bang. Yeah. Well, at least yeah. they're subbed and they're giving you, a, you yeah. know, an interaction, which drives the algorithm. It's, uh... Exactly. <laughs> Thank exactly. you, trolls. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. <laughs> but... Like you say, you've got to have a thick skin if you if you if you involved in social media in any way, shape, or form. You've got to have a bit of a thick skin because mm -hmm. uh, it's the internet, and the internet is what it is in every area, and not just modeling. Yeah, I think when you get down to it, you know, at the end of the day, as I said, it's it's your own choices. You know, you want to build Vesda, crack on. I made a choice right. not to. Um, yeah, but then you know. You know, you go down. You can be political and all this. You know, you know damn well that Airfix shit a brick when they think about what they're going to release next because of the fallout of what happened with the Afghan house. And it was you know, such a all those years ago. They're in a slightly different position ago. though, as a as a commercial company, aren't they? Because they have mm. to make choices that aren't. Yeah. You know, unlike Hollywood, um, yeah. they're not trying to actively antagonize their audience. Mm. So, you know, uh, and we've yeah, seen what yeah. happened to some of you know the flops that have been been happening there mm. because politicizing it rather than just making good entertainment, and we just want good kits, right? Mm. So it's yeah. like Luke said, we just want the entertainment piece, and you know, we're not bothered about the wider politics. That's really, I mean, that was mm. because it was taken up by the papers, wasn't it? Moss? It, mm. Nothing yeah. to do with the modeling community. It was uh, uh, just, 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 just as a caveat to that. That model looked nothing like an Afghan house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was an Iraqi house, wasn't it? Yeah, no, yeah, no, it was. No, um, it was it, 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 that's what it is. You know, it's uh, you know they, they have to make these choices, and they still don't do now. You know, they don't do well. I can't say that because the F thirty five B is modern warfare. They don't try to release kits, or you, you know. With, when all this came out of the Ukraine and every model company, well, I don't say every, but a, a huge amount of model companies were releasing kits of in support of the Ukraine. Airfix didn't. Tamiya did. They brought out a tank, didn't they? And had it in yeah. Ukraine colors yeah. and ICM and all that. Airfix didn't. But when Maverick was on the telly, wasn't it? It released in the cinema. Oh well, we've got we've got an old MIG here that we can use, isn't it? Like you know, and and put Top Gun Maverick on the box. They haven't done it recently, but you know there that are MIGs in Top Gun Maverick. Pardon? Yes, there is. Sorry, there is. Wasn't in there? No, it's not a MIG, is it? No, it's not. It, they, yeah. they, 
It was they, F5. It was. That was Top Gun, the original one. The yeah, they, they called it the MiG twenty eight, and it was actually mm. an F five. Yeah, they the five painted black. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they called it the MiG, didn't they? And there was a reason for that was because they, yeah, because they you could have it like a MiG seventeen, but it wasn't even a MiG, was it? It was uh, it was another Sukhoi Su fifty seven, I think. Yeah, in the in the new one, the Maverick one, there's yes, the Su fifty seven. Yeah, yeah. there's a Sukhoi's on it. Yeah, because yeah, because that's that that's the one I got. That's an F eighteen. F eighteen. Yeah, that's the old F A eighteen. It was an F F F eighteen E in the um. Yeah, because yeah. they couldn't use stealth technology because of plot reasons. Yeah, because <laughs> they weren't allowed to fly those. <laughs> that's an F eighteen C you got there. And they only used E's and F's in Maverick. Yeah. yeah. He's at it again. I've so, had it. Fuck off. <laughs> I was told if you can cast your mind back to the 90s and Iron Eagle 2, where there oh, was yeah. a joint operation between the Russian Air Force and the US Air Force and that to destroy some rogue state compound. But if you watch that, the plot is so similar to Maverick, so similar. Right. And apparently that's where the Maverick plot came from, was from Iron Eagle 2. Was it really Iron Eagle 2, was it? Yeah, because yeah. Iron Eagle originally was a um, sort of like a, a, a poor man's version of Top Gun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know if you can put it with the bad acting and the bad cinematography, Iron Eagle 2 is a great film. I love it. <laughs> it's a great soundtrack. Something that got me about Maverick was when you got the shots of Tom Cruise taking off and he's got his arm up here on the right-hand side of the canopy. And obviously, yeah. he was in the back of the aircraft with the camera on the back of the pilot seat, wasn't he? So I looked into this. It's and true. When they take off in an FA-18, they do hold a handle on the side of the canopy. They don't yeah. touch the controls. Yeah, the they don't touch it. Touch it. Touch Once it's launched, then they take control. They yeah. actually hold a handle on a canopy when they take off. I could yeah. not believe what I was reading. That's because yeah. that's in case everything goes wrong. So I guess. Yeah. It's um, incredible. I thought I had the MIG here. I had, I had, I'm just looking now for it. I had the MIG here. It was, it was called the MIG, but they called it a MIG 22 or something because all MIGs are odd numbers, aren't they? And they used, uh, but it wasn't actually a MIG that they used. It was another, another um, plane. And it was an American plane and they just blacked it out, didn't they? In, in Top Gun, we've been here about five minutes ago, Moss. In Top well, Gun, it was, a, it was an F5. Northrop F5. That's it, F5. That's they call it F5. Oh, God. Press F5, for God's sake, Moss. Press F5. There's a, there's a bit of delay on your line, Moss. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm standing yeah. here. Got five minutes. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Hang on, is that it? No, I, I've, I've got it here. I've got all, I bought all four of them just for the just for the shits and giggles, like, but now I can't find what I've done with them. I've got the um, the mustache. Seven, yeah. With his... You know, but I can't find the freaking. Where is that to? Is that the one there? No, it's not it. Is that it? That's my hobby type. It was a freedom fighter. I couldn't think of that then. No, yeah. I'm sure it was a, I think yeah. one. I think one, one film they used um uh, phantoms as mixed, didn't they? That was in Iron that, Eagle. That was in Iron Eagle too. Yeah, they used the fan the F four as mixed because that was the supposedly the Russian Air Force. Go into the US to train for the operation, yeah. And they were they were phantoms yeah. that weren't mixed. What's that? What's that film when it got German World War II crews driving down the road in fucking grey painted M38 trucks? <laughs> is that some <laughs> fury? Is it fury? Is it fury? Is it fury? It might have been. Oh, it might be fury that they did that, yeah. <laughs> That's the bloody mick, you know. I can't find it now. But yeah, the picture, there was a set of it. So you had this one here. Come as a set. So you had the F-14A Tomcat, that one there. Then That's you had the yeah. you had that one, which was Top Gun. That's Maverick. And then you had that one as that one as well. The F um F eighteen, wasn't it? So aircraft though, it's weird. Mm. They didn't use and those aircraft. But like you know, Viper and all that, they they had different planes altogether again, didn't they? In the first one, 
Um, yeah, yeah. There was an A A4 Skyhawk, F14, so, yeah. and F5s for the mix. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Pags is saying in the chat, don't forget the yeah. King Tide Rem 47 pattern in <laughs> Battle of the Bulge. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God, yeah. Even as a kid, I looked at that and thought, those aren't German tanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there is another film, isn't there? There's a Panzer IV or Panzer III. And if you look closely, you can see the Land Rover wheels underneath the tracks. <laughs> the tracks aren't going round. Well, even Saving Private Ryan, you know, you look yeah. at the, the Tiger and you think, I wish they could have got, you know, a, a four-driven sprocket tank to, to yeah. mess up rather than the rear-wheeled T-34 they used. Yeah. yeah. They call it the Meg. I've got one here somewhere. I'm so annoyed now. I kept them all together. But yeah, that was a job lot. Five kits. So, um, <laughs> but it's it's for sale now, seventeen ninety nine. But it's a god awful kit anyway, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're all god awful kits. Anyway, <laughs> Steve McQueen's bike in greatest great triumph. <laughs> All the mosquitoes in 633 Squadron. Yeah. <clears throat> That's because the G the G on the catapult launch would cause the pilot to pull back on the stick. It's a comment yeah, there. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it caused the plane to stall. Mm. I like Top Gun. I like I I even though he's a weirdo with his Scientology bollocks, I do like Tom Cruise's films. Yeah. He's he's eased uh, off an awful lot of that though, hasn't he? You know? No, he's still up yeah. there, mate. He's yeah. just a shadow. Yeah, I think again, like like Alex said earlier, you know, Top Gun, Maverick, Iron Eagle, there's a whole list that they're entertainment. They're not supposed yeah. to be political commentary they're not documentaries you know they're they're just there for entertainment the same as we get entertained by green bits of plastic together yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, we, we weren't expecting you know war and peace as a plot line in top gun maverick were we we right. wanted to see planes flying around and yeah. doing you know stuff that they don't really do against sams which seem to have like you know 500 mm. liters of fuel and stuff yeah, yeah. We, we know it's all silly but it's entertaining it's cool yeah we're it's not that yeah. simple guys are we we just like seeing yeah. crash chip yeah. and exactly and great soundtrack. planes <laughs> doing stuff that they'll never do in reality we love it you know yeah. that's, it. that's it we know maverick's going to be the one that hits the target we know there's going to be some yeah, sort of absolutely. upset. We know he's going to steal an F-14 at some point from the... Yeah. You know, it's definitely not Iran. He's going to... Fall no, 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 it's literally just going to say that. No, it wasn't an Iranian one at all. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. What uses Russian equipment and still has F-14s? Hmm. It's drawing a blank. It's like, it's like Rambo 3, isn't it? you got Rambo there yeah. on a horse, and there's this fuck-off huge helicopter coming in, and he throws a stick at it, and it blows up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's completely realistic, yeah. I think that that just that that, yeah. is, is a fictional helicopter. It's not a real. No. It's, it's not a real. In track. I think they took one helicopter, then they put some sponsons on the side of it. it. It's not a real. It's not a real combat gunship at all. What do you think of the um, the hind shots in um, Rambo? I thought they were pretty impressive. Yeah. 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 The hind. And, and, you know, whether you agree with the politics or not, no one can deny the hind is a phenomenal piece of kit. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, yeah. Mm. It's Russian. It's beautiful. Yeah, it, it is. Oh, that's you cancelled, Nigel. Well, <laughs> I think it's not being, it's not being funny. I saw my stash, everything I own, which stays on the ground and doesn't fly, mm. pretty much everything I own post-World War One is Russian or Israeli. So I'm fucked. <laughs> I mean, the Macarver, it's a cool looking yeah. tank. It's, it's a weird. It is. It's not yeah. like it's all right, comrade Nigel. Nigel. Sorry? It's all right, comrade Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> but Alex, you talk to scale modelers who do armor, and you've got the British lads who all they will do is build a tiger because they love yeah. it. They won't touch yeah. a Sherman, Sherman, what, well, well, you know, or a church or anything. Yeah. They, they will go and build a tiger because they love tiger one, you know, they love them. 
Mm -hmm. And that's why FX have them in their range every year. You, you look at the everything that's in their range every year. It's mm -hmm. always the bog, you know, the German, it's you know, sells. it's what sells. Yeah, Spitfires. You know, and oh, Heinz, yeah. as you and said, they just, Heinz, they just released a MIG and it's in Hungarian colours or something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I no, think... They've got a MIG in American colours, haven't they? So... I, I'm, I'm thinking of, yeah. I'm a, I'm a bad cat fan, and, and uh, everybody knows it. Really? I, I just love the look no. of it. I the sound of it. I've mm. got a friend in our model club, and all he does is build flankers because he says it's the glorious thing you can hear on the ground. And he's done all the SU 20, 20, 28, is it? SU 28? 27. 27. 27. To be fair, there's, there's, there's usually a flanker in each club. Yeah. <laughs> The <laughs> you know, even so much. The W is silent, and, and, even, and even so much, he's, he 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 put one of his because we had kits for sale there. He put one of his. He put this out here, the flanker D, the three quid. Oh, my God. I bought it. You know? nice. oh, yeah. I just I just wanted her. Is she that doesn't even work. It's like half a figure with a big, you know, yeah. bubble head on it, like you know. Yeah. But no, and there. Were, so, I mean, people will it, it go oh. through the scam show on, on the weekend. There's <laughs> Russian sig there, isn't there? Yeah. There's yeah, a there's guy a Russian, called the Russian sig. There's a Russian mm. armor sig. There's a Russian aircraft sig. There's a flanker mm. sig. All of those. Mix sig. There's, a, there's an IDF. There's a website dedicated to IDF modeling. Yep. You've got yeah. to be pre approved to go on there. I got rejected. Really? Yeah. Did you? Hmm. You go on Why? there. You've got to. You've got to email a certain person and ask, and then you've got to answer some questions. And I got hmm. rejected because um, I said I'm particularly interested in because there's something that fascinates me. Russia built a T55 or T54, and then it was sold to Egypt, and then, and then. Israel captured it, refurbished it, and then it went off to Jordan. So you think of the chipping possibilities you got with that, what you can go back to, you know, and all the yeah. updates and everything. And they didn't like that. <laughs> so I got yeah. Well, I, um, you know, yeah, I we we, we it's, it's a big mountain, isn't it? It is a rabbit hole to go down, isn't it? And I, you know, sometimes you go to the big, I, yeah. I love it, yeah. it's so cool. Just the colours as well, the the different colours they have, they're so different, yeah. so much better than... And I think going back to, to Luke's point, you know, about what fascinates mm. us and, you know, for me, the the competition, the different approaches, like that acceleration through, even through the Cold War, which was still a conflict, it was just, you know, didn't wasn't an active one. Yeah, but it was just the SU-27 compared to the F-15 Eagle, the different approaches the two nations took... And the planes evolved in similar ways because similar levels of technology existed, but there were different approaches in there. And the way mm. that the Russians focused on maneuverability for dogfighting and the Americans went mm. more for like long range, beyond visual range, you know, carrying capacity, extended range, mm. all this kind of stuff. It's just fascinating, I think, because we're all humans, right? We all have mm. the commonality. It was the same species, same brains. And we put in these situations, what are the solutions we come up with? Like the NASA pen and the Russian pencil thing, you know. Alex, can I just interrupt you there a second? Yeah. You said we're all the same. We all think the same. We're all the well, same. No, I didn't say we all think some, the same. Some of us are women. <laughs> he's, he's been cancelled twice in the same show. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, There's a good question there, Moss, from Polygon, if you put that one up. Well, firstly, um, just, build, just build a Spitfire and be safe, right? <laughs> yeah. build, or build an IDF Spitfire. Um, He's finished with, off what yeah. he did. Hitler flying it. Yeah. If you want piece of advice to someone new starting into modelling, read the fucking instructions. Yeah. Simples. Don't blame read the kit. The always dry fit. Stick it Don't blame the kit. Always dry fit. Always dry fit. My, my it's stick advice. of that, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, it is. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's there yeah. and it's on my toolbox that I take to show you. <laughs> I don't think I've got one of those, Moss. I'll have to pick one up next time I see you. 
Yeah, yeah, I've given you a couple, I think, right? My, my, got, my, my advice is to buy the best tools you can afford. Mm. Mm. Uh, that would be my one because we all fall into the trap, particularly when we're new at it. Shiny box looks cool. Mm. You buy the ki- you buy a hundred kits because they all look cool, but then you haven't got the tools to put them together. And there's nothing more frustrating. It's like having a full packet of fags and no lighter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's nothing yeah. more frustrating. So spend get a couple of kits, quite straightforward ones. Their fix are great. There you go. Yeah. Nigel's got one. Um, but buy the best tools that you can afford because they will serve you so well and they'll last you a long time i i've had people ask me questions you know, they've got like they're building a bandai millennium falcon what's the best sadness sticks i can get i can't afford those infinity ones but you bought a bandai millennium falcon. <laughs> <laughs> you know? why didn't you buy yeah. a millennium falcon yeah. and some sanding sticks yeah and yeah i said it i've just paid like 900 pounds for this uh this uh bismarck um yeah. would super glue work <laughs> you know what i mean i've had the yeah, yeah. Super glue. can yeah, i put yeah. it together with copy decks no i've got half <laughs> no, a tube no. of yuzu from 1992 is that okay I, I, no it is yeah. it's, it's, if you want to upset someone i brought a bismarck one to 200 scale kit can i paint it pink mm. <laughs> hey what color you want yeah if you want yeah. it so my advice is ask the question what do you use to drill holes the drill the drill yeah <laughs> i find if you get a needle and put it over a lighter then you can pierce it <laughs> <laughs> just carefully your fingers put something around the other yeah. end with all your, your fingers <laughs> get, get your knife and just turn it do you know what yeah. i think i've told you this before when i was at rolls royce i had a lad come up to me an apprentice he said have you got a drill i can borrow I said, what size do you want? He went, about that long. <laughs> <laughs> I am not lying. I am Classic. not lying. Seriously. Classic. I could not believe my ears. Also, buy yourself a bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin and thank us later. Yeah. I'd also say, you know, do something that you love as a first mm. step. Don't buy something as like a test model. Because if you have a disaster with that, you just you won't love it, and any problems will be amplified and things. Just do something you you want to do and just enjoy it. And never build a subject you're not interested in. And yeah. I, I think now, as someone coming into the hobby, I mean, I've only been building for eleven years, so I, oh. I didn't I didn't experience like you guys did prior youtube prior internet prior i i didn't experience any of that but i've learned so much from youtube social media groups i've learned so That's much there's such a wealth of knowledge and experience and people are willing to share that knowledge experience i don't think i'd be building models like i'm building now within the space of 10 years if I wasn't involved in the social media side of things because mm. I, the learning just seems to accelerate. You know, it's, it's I, just... I can watch Nigel do something no. in almost real time on a video. Well, thirty years ago, I would never have had that opportunity unless mm. Nigel was at my local modelling club, and I might see him every third Thursday. You know, it's. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, if you didn't catch it the first time, you can rewind it, play it again. You can pause it. You can it now, then you can see it frame by frame. Like it's, it's just phenomenal the amount of knowledge that's out there, and it will. If you get involved in it, it will accelerate. You're careful which groups you join because some of them aren't that helpful. But <laughs> I will, I will quick... say this. I, I will say this. What I've noticed on a lot of the groups is somebody puts them up saying this is you know, this is my model kit, this is one one of my first attempts. There's not a lot of negativity, well hardly yeah. any. There'll be more in trying to encourage you to keep yeah. on going. Um yeah. what, when what, you get to certain what, what, groups, there's there's certain groups that will critique it to death. Yeah, yeah. And then you want to stay away from them. You just yeah. wanna you wanna you know look. 
think of think of when when you when when you're a kid, like you know. I always say that the reason why there's graffiti everywhere is because of fridge magnets. Because kids come home, they show you this crap picture, and what do you do? Oh, this is wonderful! Shove it on a fridge. You know what I mean? And there you go. Your 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 fridge is covered in graffiti. So it's fridge magnets. Now, when you first start, it is like being a child. It really is. You, and you start to learn. And the best thing about it is, is that if something doesn't work, just just um, um, experiment. If you if you're struggling with certain paints. Leave them. Go to something else. Um, you know, but don't think you're going to go out there and become an airbrusher. That's not the way it works. You refine your skills using the hairy stick first. Yeah. Uh, and one, one thing that I want to say it annoys me because that's a strong word. But mm -hmm. whenever that, whenever there's a big show, whether it's in Europe, the UK, the US, wherever, what happens on social media? is that it gets flooded with images from the competition area, you know, gold yeah. class, world yeah. beating modelers. Yeah. And it, what happens as a consequence of that is people that perhaps aren't there yet, or yeah. people that are at that level can become very intimidated yeah. by, by those images. I'm never going to be able to do that. So I'm not going to share my work. I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to post my stuff. That, that's completely the wrong way of looking at it. Use those images, bearing in mind some of those images are the best modelers in the world. Use them as inspiration. You, use them as a, you know, I'll never get there. I'll never get there. I am average at best. I'll mm. never get to that level. But there are people out there that are at that level. I, I, do, you, I think you're phenomenal with your weathering and stuff. I think your modeling. Oh. Is some of the best I've ever seen. But but it's all opinion, isn't it? It's all opinion, and we're all our own worst critics. Yeah, and we I all... think I think where I'm sitting now, having been modeling for 54 years and having a fairly large YouTube channel, I think my opinion counts for something. I think you're yeah. absolutely well, right. Nig Nig Nigel's opinion counts for a lot. Best time you're extra thin. That was Nigel's suggestion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's BMS Black. That was oh, Nigel. Yeah. yeah. All day long. Decent nippers. That was yeah. Nigel's suggestion. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's cost us all thousands over the years because he mentions something we all got on And uh, Nigel, I don't like wash um, weathering. Florida oh, dirt yeah. wash. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, so yeah. you say, and like you were saying, you know, art is, you know are the beholder it's like i look at um what's that is it edvard munch scream you know that the woman you know, yeah. that that i looked at that for real i think mean, it's a load of shite but, they, <laughs> but it's a priceless piece it is i, I could do better i could get a woman to look going, you know and i would say to myself you know what 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 you know it depends what people are doing a lot of people like, for instance, with 3D Gizmo, with that ding, dingo, I bought it because I want to do a 3D resin build. And I said to him, I go, you know, how do I glue it? Oh, just use super glue. Just touch it, bang, it will work fine. Brilliant. Okay. And I said, I see there's a lot of negativity about this because it's low part count. He said, there's a lot of people who love building dioramas. They can't be asked with the faff of building mm -hmm. a, a model with 190 pieces for a tank. You know, and I get that. And, and that's where you got to look at, you know, 1171 parts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I love, I love mini art. I love mini art mm. T55s. Yeah. However, if I'm putting a T55 on a diorama, <laughs> that I'm then going to cover yeah. half it in the tarpaulin or yeah. whatever you're going to do with it, would I get a mini art one? Probably not. I'd probably no, get a right. one. Well, I can't stand with a lot of these Chinese manufacturers, though, especially Ryfield model. I don't know if you've experienced this, Luke. It's like when they do stuff like the little towing eye on the back of a Sherman tank, and they only it's photo etch, and it's about yeah. six pieces of photo etch, and it's all edge on, glued on, and it's just mm. what, give us a plastic option as well. We might not want all that, you know, we're going to cover it in mud anyway. You, I think, you I think it, right, it, it falls off. Like are in. Think, doing and that and this comes back to what alex was saying about these gatekeepers mm -hmm. and these mm -hmm. 
people that because people will turn around in certain circles and if you've put a plastic towing eye on your tank they'll critique it mm. because it's not quite to scale it's not quite detailed enough as on as on a macabre mm. etc so the manufacturers then get pushed into this position where or certain manufacturers get pushed pushed into a position where they will we've got to do it that way because if we don't the elite that they consider themselves to be they're not going to build that kit because or they're not going to buy that kit because we haven't given them the option whereas for most people like we were talking about i couldn't give two shits whether i'd rather get a plastic one put it on there weather it appropriately yeah done i'd rather have the option I'd yeah the problem option. is with a lot of the photo ex stuff and i was having this discussion with this guy last night actually because he's a photo ex guru he's very very good at it but my problem is because i like to weather if i'm doing armor i like to weather them i like to make them look used the problem with delicate photo etch parts is when you come to that weathering process mm. it's very very easy to then either knock it off if you've got a tool clamp or a tow hook or whatever it's very very easy to knock it off or damage it in a way you don't want it to be damaged mm. plastic is a little bit more forgiving when you yeah. get to that weathering stage and have and that VMS black thin super glue link say again mate have you got vms black thin super glue yeah yeah if you use that you very difficult to ping it off it's actually yeah quite and i bought recently i got because i do use a lot of photo actually i build a lot of mini art stuff and next year i want to do a ship so i'm gonna to have to do a lot of photo stuff so i bought one of these oh yeah really What's good that? really good USB soldering USB pen. usb soldering iron yeah it's like a little pen oh, really right, good. Soldering. Okay. Yeah. and it's it's really really good and it for me it removes that faff mm. Do you know what I mean? Of gluing edge to edge, little tiny photo edge. Because I, 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 soldering, just, I, I use soldering whenever I can. I've done loads of I videos. A mess. Whereas soldering is the way ahead. But it's not for everyone. Not everyone wants to go out and buy a soldering iron and use flux. And not everyone wants to do that. They just want a plastic part they can stick on and paint. Mm. No, neither's right or wrong, you know. And that's what I was saying the other day about the, you know, people were going the the first scout ethic saying that the you know the plastic was wrong and the back end was wrong because of really you should have used photo etch there but if you want to use photo etch go and buy it there was somebody who will do that but i yeah. do i do say often that the reason i if if they if they this is a photo etch part and they don't offer it in a plastic part i won't build the kit because i don't mm. want to do photo etch. i seriously i don't want to do photo etch I, I, i've tried it you know, even this one here, this has got a photo etch in it. I'd rather, mm. you know, they've got a photo etch for the fan. I'd rather they put a plastic one in as well. Yeah. So you have a choice. It might have. So, it might have in that. I think it has. No, it's, it doesn't. It's on the instructions, it's saying use the photo etch. Oh, okay. Because Lee Bohr has his own photo etch company as well. Oh, yeah. please, please do that live, Moz. Yeah, this <laughs> one. <laughs> we'll, all, we'll all tune in, we promise. Yeah, yeah, I won't laugh once. I'll do it. I'll do it, an yeah. I'll do it <laughs> as a paid membership only video. <laughs> when you talk about all this technology, name me possibly the best model kit manufacturer to ever walk the face of this earth. And they're I'm in lying. New Zealand and they're owned by Peter Jackson. Yeah. Not wings. They don't feature photo etch. There's usually about four or five bits of photo etch in one mm. of their kits. Yeah. And they don't do slide molding, mm. and yet they're one of the, that border model Lancaster has got one thousand six hundred odd parts in it. It's got yeah. about six bits of photo etch in it. The whole starboard cockpit. And people talk about mini art being mini is great. The whole starboard side of the cockpit interior is one piece of plastic. There is nothing you glue on other than the, the seat. It's all one. It's just it's painting. It's all about clever painting. Yeah, um, you can do it. You can do a lot. You can do a lot with some clever, yeah, painting. Design. You can yeah. do a lot because you're creating almost a visual illusion. I never yeah. paint eyes on thirty-fifth scale or less. 
ever. That's something it, I want to learn off of you, Lucas, painting figures. Yeah, at that scale. So even if you're putting it into a competition, chances are the closest that judge is going to get to that figure is between 8 and 12 inches away from, from a 35th scale figure. That's probably the closest their eyeball is going to be to it. Judges aren't allowed to take photos and zoom in. They aren't. Some do, but they're not supposed to. Um, they're not supposed to use any sort of magnifying mm. stuff. They've got to look at it and, and whatever. Well, mm. at 35th scale, from eight inches away, as long as you can create a shadow where the eye should be, it gives the impression of an eye. Yeah. Now, unless you're really, really good at figure painting and you can paint eyes really, really well, at 35th scale or less, there's never a requirement to do it. No, it, it, yeah, it's what you said it. there. It's the illusion. What we're mm. doing is creating the illusion of what is yeah. happening. We talked about mm. this about light and stuff before. I'm looking at all of you on the screen here, uh, and on my screen, everybody's head is about an inch and a half tall, which mm. is what maybe one, what I don't know, one twelfth, one sixth, yeah, 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 one twelfth, one tenth. Yeah. One tenth. Um, and I can just see the whites of our eyes. Um, Catch your mic with your reflection of the glasses. And not yeah. I've ever seen yeah. mine. S hey, Sully's are the hardest, but uh, <laughs> Sully's a <laughs> car. Yeah. And yet yeah. you see people do white eyes in one seventy-second scale figures. It's just like guys, a wash is actually you know, yeah. Yeah. more than accurate. More than accurate. So, yeah. Well, actually, I was having this discussion with a customer in the shop today. We were talking about exactly this, and I brought up some photos on the computer. And put them even at 124 scale, guy in a Spitfire, you couldn't see his eyes. No. 124 scale equivalent mm. you know, on the screen. And it's just yeah. like people do kind of overdo it. And, and the you trouble is, the I actual do. subjects look at reality rather than what you think reality is. Mm. It's why, as, as, a, yeah. as a species, we look at a face and we know mm. there should be two eyes, one each side of the nose. Yeah. So, regardless of scale, we think we've got to put them on, but actually, if we create the illusion of that shadow where our, our skull overlaps our eyes in general, then that's enough. Yeah. It's funny, it's funny. It's funny. People, people do paint eyes, they generally get, yeah, yeah, <laughs> one eye looking over there, one over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because I remember my mate years because I like anime, I you know, you know, Mazinga Z and things like that when I was growing up. And he said, "Do you ever notice the eyes? They've always got like that square bit of white. So mm -hmm. you got the you got the white of the eye, then you've got like the the pupil, and then you've got the out you know the outside, the different color yeah. blue, brown. But Chinese, they always put uh, like a white square by the eye, so mm -hmm. like a reflection of the light. And you look at it, and they all do it. But in real life, that's not true, is it? You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's just because they add it to give it a bit more look. I saw a guy in America more... doing a sixteenth scale figure." And he started with the eyes, and instead of he said, never put a circle. He painted a black line, no, and then because he said, when you look at eyeballs, it's not round. Your eyelids cover the top and bottom of the eyeball. Yes. Not, yeah. not so talking about anime eyes because they are a very specific mm. style, the way they do them. The only way, really, unless you're real top of your game. So I'm painting an anime crew for the angle vice. And there's no way I can paint the eyes in the way that I would do it on a normal 35th scale figure. It and just wouldn't look big eyes, haven't they? The big shiny glowing oh, eyes. Deckles, deckle eyes, oh, yeah. Wow. Deckle eyes, yeah. Wow. You can get those. And they're anime style eyes. Yeah. For for females. So they've got like the real exaggerated eyelashes and all that sort of stuff yeah. and the oversight eyes. So you can use those, but I couldn't paint them. No way. I've got to say, Luke, that's a really thin excuse to, to rely on to, for visiting those websites. But uh... <laughs> whatever works. <laughs> there you go. That that is anime that's, eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is yeah. anime eyes. Yeah. Now, I defy anyone. I've got some really good, expensive paintbrushes, mm. but I defy anyone that can paint that eye on a thirty-fifth scale figure. Yeah. Mm. Just, just a, an unrelated question. Why was there a mouth there as well? <laughs> <laughs> That's my other hobby. <laughs> oh, 
I think we've hit two hours, Moss. We should stop. <laughs> yeah, we should stop. <laughs> we've gone from Maverick, <laughs> IDF. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's any chance of this video being monetized, Moss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. COVID. Definitely. It's always a good chat with you, lads. It's always good banter, isn't it? You know, it's, uh, it was a free for all. Um, thank you all in the chat. I've tried to get through as many questions as I can tonight. So I had a complaint, so we don't look at the chat too much. I understand what you're saying, but like I said, we, we go into like into a rhythm, don't we? And we kind of keep going off onto a tangent, then we move ourselves back in. But it's always good to have you to watch us. And uh, again, remember to subscribe and like to all the channels here. Um, and it's free. You don't have to pay yeah. to subscribe. So always uh, give us a little see, thumbs up. I say it's free, by the way. Yeah, I know you do. It's completely free. Um, but yeah, it's really good having you all on. It's always been, it's always, it always, the two hours go so quick. It's like, uh, somebody yeah. said the other day that, um, they listen to it like a podcast now. They have it in their car and they listen to it. Like a it it's that sort of format, isn't it? Yeah. You're not showing te te technique guides or no tutorials or whatever. It is just a chat about the hobby and then offshoots of what comes. Yeah. Films. It's our Monday night equivalent to going to the pub, isn't it? It yeah. is definitely, yeah. Next week we'll have we'll have a Russian flag, uh, <laughs> yeah. flag and what's <laughs> else? All, all, all on screen just to upset everyone. So I'm currently building SU twenty seven in Palestinian colours. I've literally just finished that Su twenty seven in Russian markings, not one negative comment. Mm. But I put the video up of a hind, and oh my god, I'm like Satan incarnate. Wow. I better not put my third Reich Macabre up then. <laughs> 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 anyway, gents, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Uh, same time, eight o'clock. Cheers, all. Bye bye. See you all.